Okay, motion to suppress evidence. Uh, special word to police officers here on this. The best motion to suppress evidence is the one that doesn't get filed, okay? And motion to suppress don't get filed when police officers write good reports. In other words, you're going to sit down and you're going to say, I have seized a particular piece of evidence from this guy, from his car, from his person, whatever it is. When you're writing your report, you're going to say to yourself, now, okay, what exception to the warrant requirement did I base my search upon? What were the totality of the circumstances that justified this warrantless search of this person and allowing me to, allowed me to recover this particular piece of evidence, okay? Now, the drunk driving context, typically the evidence that you're going to require is going to be corroborative evidence. Keep in mind, when you get in a dial subpoena blood, you're getting blood that's taken at the hospital, potentially post-treatment. So whatever they've done to that person may be impacting the reading. So when you draw the dial subpoena, you draw it for all medical treatment up to and including the drawing of that blood. So when your expert looks at it, he knows what else has been dumped in the system and what else has been going on. Um, I've done that routinely. I've never had anybody challenge it, not to say it couldn't be challenged, I suppose, on some privacy ground. But um, I think you're advised to do it because without that, you're getting a reading uh, in a context that you're not really sure what, it's, what, it's, what it really represents. Chris Baxter and, uh, and Bob, you guys done, done doll hearings like 4,000 well, times? From the, just from a, you know, from a municipal court perspective, uh, the DUIs where you don't have quite as much pressure, I guess the, the practical advice is to the officer, take the blood kit with you, make sure that you don't have to involve the, the hospital to the extent that you don't want their lab involved. But sometimes you can't, though, because of the nature of the injury. Yeah, but I mean, from a DWI perspective, if you can do that, it's so, so much easier because there is tremendous pressure for them now because of the confrontation clause mm -hmm. issues forcing people to come to court to, that, that they don't want to be involved if they can help it. What about you? Do you do these dial hearings? You don't have a hospital in your town, do you? No, but I'm laughing because about four weeks ago, one of our officers uh, was in a pretty bad accident, wound up hospitalized. Guess where he was on his way to? The lab. <laughs> one of the blood samples in a previous DWI was in the car. Guess what happened to the blood samples? Uh, All over the place. Uh, um, so uh, there, the individual in the first DWI um, obviously was in an, well, not obviously, was in an accident. Um, so now we're in the middle of a dial hearing to get the records from ACMC, which is in Galloway Township. But we do not hesitate to add that this stop is about as close to the constitutional line as we can condone. All right. And then De Loretto, Supreme The Court. community caretaking doctrine remains a narrow exception to the warrant requirement. Consistent with that view, all future cases decided under that doctrine will turn strictly on their individual facts and will be subject, as always, to meticulous judicial review. So you can see that this is somewhat a disfavored uh, exception to the warrant requirement, but yet it's perfectly fine, provided that, again, your activities are divorced from traditional law enforcement crime fighting and you're you know, taking care of people because they're sick or need your help or uh, you have some type of founded uh, suspicion of criminal activity. You know, uh, you have two community caretaking cases that are not up there. One was State versus Cryan, the fella which was reminiscent of Martinez because there the rationale for the stop was a momentary stop at a stop sign, but there was reports of many burglaries in the area right. and the court would not cross the community caretaking line in that instance and in fact, throughout the stop and throughout Crian's arrest for DWI. Is that the same crime we just talked about? Same guy? There's a number of crimes out there. This is up in Chatham. Okay. So uh, they are highly fact sensitive. Even a case like Washington, which talks about weaving uh, within the lane and nine miles below the speed limit, there were some other factors in there. You could have very similar facts to Martinez and the stop may still get thrown out. The key as a police officer is simply to document what you saw as accurately and completely as possible work in good faith, although that doesn't really come into play in these situations, but it does in a civil context. And um, document your observations as best you can and just let, the, however it falls out in court, that's the concern of lawyers and judges. Okay, Dino. These are the laws that will support motor vehicle stops, and I've just given you the ones that are common and related to DWI. The uh, leading case in terms of establishing a reasonable and articulable suspicion as the basis for stopping motor vehicles in our country is the uh, Delaware versus Prowse case. There's a New Jersey case on it called State versus Carpentier area, but it says the same thing as Delaware versus Prowse. Reasonable and articulable suspicion is what's necessary. <coughs> now, this is an extremely low amount of evidence, a slight amount of evidence, but it's got to be more than nothing, okay? It can't be just based on a hunch. As Steve pointed out, the hospital blood is taken for diagnostic purposes. They just want to know if the substance is on board, whether you have alcohol in your system, because they want to know whether it's going to interact with, interact with any medications. 
Uh, and the state police uh, lab, unfortunately, doesn't uh, quantify any of their uh, analysis. When the municipality takes it upon themselves to go out and uh, go the extra step, you know, they're going to start to get some convictions on these types of cases, uh, as opposed to what Steve pointed out, that, uh, you know, it's just basically they don't quantify that. And I take it Ocean County doesn't use a uh, state police lab. We don't. We use a private lab for everything. Let me just clarify that, though. You know, for your purposes, we're talking about DWI convictions. For my purposes, we're talking about certainly establishing a DWI, which is not the same necessarily as establishing a reckless. So. Um, it, it's two different things, and, and it, it certainly would be easier for you to establish just with the presence of a drug, a DWI uh, violation, than it would be for me to establish just with presence recklessness. That would be a whole other thing. All right, here we go. Under the influence. Now, we're not talking about under the influence of alcohol here, okay? That's too simple. What we're going to do is talk about the other things that you can be found guilty of, which are narcotic, hallucinogen, habit-producing drug, or chemical inhalant, all right? How do you go about proving one of those cases? Um, Chris Baxter, did you do some preparation on this? you have any thoughts on this? Sure, but the DRE, is the, the State versus BLR Supreme Court came out with an opinion, and, uh, and the DRE, is, at least at the municipal level, is still the preferred way. Uh, but the good news is that they are saying that there's two parts to it, really. There's the fact of intoxication, which the officer can testify as a late witness. And then there's the corroborating evidence of what you find at the scene. And the officer can't testify about that. That would be something more in the ballot book of an expert, if necessary. So I guess the practical pointer is to make sure that you observe and write down everything that you see, or those facts of intoxication, the things you would normally do in any DWI report. <clears throat> and then whatever you find, make sure it's documented, empty bottles, pills, uh, right. so that you can say, this is what I saw, and this is what I found. And the, fa and the judge, the fact finder, is allowed to act, I guess, as a quasi-expert, if you read State versus Beale, at least with respect to marijuana cases, and make the jump from whether or not the person was under the influence from what was found at the scene based on what they observed. Bob Pinizzato, this was in your jurisdiction. <clears throat> Were you involved in this case at all? No, I wasn't. Um, Beeler has been very, very good to me. And what I mean by that is, when you look at Beeler and DiCarlo, um, I believe that any municipal prosecutor worth their weight is going to be able to get a conviction. The reason being exactly what Chris said, um, any officer is going to be able to testify as to the intoxication of marijuana, especially when the individual says, yeah, I just smoked a joint um, before getting, getting into my car. But DREs are going to be able to testify on just about any, any of the drugs that you're seeing out there on the street. The Carlo is as, almost as old as John Sitzler. Um, coming from 1975, um, DiCarlo basically just gives you the ability as a prosecutor to indicate any drug is going to be a narcotic substance for purposes of attempting to get a conviction. You're then going to bring in your DRE or, depending on the officer's training and experience, if you have a lot of drug training, other courses, you don't have to be a DRE. Uh, I believe that uh, between those two cases, any any narcotic or any CDS case is pretty easy to convict. Where's Chris Kearns? Uh, uh, Sean Kearns, I mean. Sean, where are you? What does the word analgesic mean when you have an analgesic effect? Analgesic? Yeah. Painkiller? Okay. He's a DRA, and I hear that in court all the time, too, analgesic. John, do you believe Beeler is as uh, devastating to the defense as our friend Bob Pinizzato leads us to believe? Well, he makes it pretty catastrophic. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, of course, he practices before a judge that um, <laughs> about three degrees to the right of Attila. Has a real problem putting Matt and Guilty in the same sentence. Very difficult, very difficult. All right, 